everyone! Welcome back to 100 Days of Magic. I hope you don't mind. I am in frozen and running around the house like a crazy woman mode because my daughter is coming back from Europe and I am doing paperwork. So please, this is like not on camera. <laughs> I hope you do not mind and I'm glad to be able to spend some time with you even if I am a little bit late today. Uh, hello, Pat. It's good to see you. We are going to talk about how you create a spell for finding something. And um, so let's talk about the ins and outs of lost objects and how you use magic to bring about bringing them back into your life. So let's consider for a moment what you lose. And generally speaking, it falls into one of three categories. There's the stuff that just went temporarily missing that you're going to find eventually, like, because you do. Like, your if you came in the house, you know you drove home, you know you opened the door, so the keys are in the house. They can't be anywhere else. They're in the house. And so it's a question of where in the house are the keys. So that's one, that's the level one I call of finding things where really if the house is, unless the house is huge, they, they can't be very far. They're probably just hidden under something or they fell down and it's just, you've been panicking and so you haven't been able to find the things. All right, so level two of this issue is when something like a ring that fell off where something got put out of place, fell off in the yard. Then we get a little more complicated about finding things because they're not where you, in the three places where they could possibly be. And then level three is when it starts to involve other people, like, you know, roommates that move out or um, spouses that like to throw things away or any of these other things that involve a more complicated level of figuring out where the heck the thing is. So when you are creating a spell for finding different levels of lostness are going to require different levels of effort, assuming you can get it back at all. So generally speaking for the first level, I don't even bother with the spell. It's more of a, Hey, Hey, house elves, can I have my thing back, please? So for example, um, a couple nights ago, I always put my glasses on my desk in my, in my bedroom before I go to sleep. And the dog wanted to go out at like 4.30 in the morning, which is unfortunately not as uncommon as I would like it to be. Anyway, so I went to get my glasses and they're like not on the desk. And I am not awake and I'm like, oh, I have to walk the dog and I have to be able to see something. So I, I just couldn't find them. And I like looked in the three places where they might be like my desk in my office or the bathroom or the nightstand. They wouldn't be anywhere else. And so I was like, okay, house else. I need these back in the morning. And I just put on my old pair of glasses, which the prescription's out of date, but yeah, it's close enough. Took the dog for a while, came back in, lay down. And I'm like, I will have them back in the morning or you will tell me where they are. <laughs> so I went to sleep and I got up and I'm like, okay, glasses, where are they? And so I'm like, I left, I didn't even get out of the bed. I'm like, okay, I left them on the desk. Maybe they fell in the desk chair. And I got up and I looked in the desk chair. That's where they are. That's level one kind of spell for finding. You ask your guides to tell you where the thing is and you autom then you get a clear vision in your head of what it looks like. No spell required, no, no major candle magic or anything else. All right. If something is really, really lost, like, I mean, level two, let's talk about level two is, you know, this is, let's say I have this bracelet here. Let's say the clasp on this broke when I was out in walking the dog and I didn't notice it at the time, but I noticed, I knew I had it on when I left and I didn't have it on when I got home. So somewhere on my walk, my XYZ fell off. This might need a more active intervention because 
it's a small thing, but it's still a, a, it could only be in one certain area. A lot, I mean, assuming that, you know, you walk the dog the same way and you know where you went. So for this, um, you might consider, um, sometimes those people with a Catholic background will say like a quick prayer for St. Anthony, who's the finder of lost objects. Um, you could, uh, you could, I, I love the ring the bell spell that I wrote for finding lost things. Um, I have a, a bell with a really nice sound and I ring it. And I imagine that on the, the energy that goes out, it, it's sending out the waves of spirit guides to go find the thing that I need. But whatever you do, you have an intention to bring this back to you. You can even, you can even envision like a, the, the, the silver lasso, the like silver lasso spell where you like, imagine you have a lasso and you're, and you're pitching it over the lost object and you're pulling it back to you. So it comes back to you. That's another good visualization. Um, all of those can be really useful, but they're not going to prevent you from having to like walk that path where you took the dog or wherever you happen to be were like where you left your phone and you left your wallet. You're going to have to make some call, some phone calls or take a little walk because if you want to get it back, unless you're relying on someone else giving it back to you, which can happen if you're really lucky, they'll, they'll call you before just you do the spell and they'll call you instantaneously. Be prepared that there's going to be a little bit of walking involved. So for the third level, where other people were involved in whatever the really missing thing is, or it you lost it so long ago, you're like, I don't know what I did with this. I didn't put it in the normal place. Um, I personally find this is the perfect tool for horary astrology. Horary astrology is a technique where you cast a chart for the moment uh, of the question and it indicates in what area of your life you should be looking for the answers for that question. So I found all kinds of things with horror astrology. I find it super useful. Um, it'll tell you the location in a house. It'll describe the contents around the object, the situation, if it's up high, if it's like, like enclosed, if it's down low, you, 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 it gives you some options that often jog your memory of where you might want to be looking for something. But if that's not available to you, if you don't have a good horary astrologer, it's the last version where weird stuff has happened. You know, the, the former roommate has packed up all their stuff and you think some of your stuff is in there. Or the ex-partner who won't give you your stuff back and it's kind of lost. Um, this is when you sit down and you do a really a, a more formal, a more formal bring my stuff back spell, which... Again, for any kind of spell, we can use we can use sigils, we can use um, candles, we can use uh, we talked about those already. We can use magic bundles and bags, which is um, when you put different objects into a bag and use it as a kind of a talisman for something. Those work really great right, for habit habit changing things. Um, we can use cord magic, which I think we're going to do for this one because it's the only one left over that's super simple that we haven't talked about yet. So tomorrow when we come back to do a spell for finding objects, I'm going to assume that this object is like really lost because the other two spells you can, you know, just work with your spirit guide. So a really lost object, we are going to do a cord magic spell for bringing that energy back to you. All right. So I hope that all makes sense. Thank you for putting up with me and my my uh <laughs> my attire of the day um and i want to thank mary for um suggesting this as a spell we'll do the planning we'll do the actual spell tomorrow and then we'll talk about again what you need to do afterwards but the after is pretty clear you know you've got to go you're gonna have to put in some uh some legwork you might need to to go track down the lost stuff okay so last thing if you're asking the difference between doing magic and not doing magic because you would do those things anyway. This is where the lines get blurry. You know, anytime in my, in my dialogue, anytime you are tapping in to that higher, more wise person within you, the part of you that still exists in that divine 
consciousness layer. Anytime you're talking to that part of you, you're doing magic. So if you're talking to the house elves or you're asking for like spiritual guidance or a, a psychic vision in order to help find things, which a lot of people do anyway, you know, hey, Elvis, go find me a parking spot. That's magic just by, so lots of people do magic. They don't even call it magic because they think that it's just something that they've been doing their whole life. So why, why bother? It's just that magic comes in different layers and we have to understand the complexity of what we're asking for in order to match the kind of magical intervention we're going to do to the level of oomph it might take to make a change in the world. Because you can see how it's way different from a magical point of view, the amount of energy it takes to like look in your chair and find the glasses, which were right next to where you thought they were anyway. And, you know, convincing your spouse to give you, who was really mad at you, to give you back your CDs because they weren't his in the first place. If that sounds too personal, then sorry about that. <laughs> That's going to take a lot more oomph to get it done. Um, so we're going to talk about that and we talk, do the after effects of a finding spell. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to go and like continue the chaos of my day. And I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Bye, everyone.